UFC veteran Nate Diaz has always been a controversial figure in the promotion, from saying all fighters are on drugs to taking a leak outside the UFC Athletic Center, Diaz has always been a fan favorite. And after his last fight at the promotion, Dana White stepped into his locker room to pay tribute to the legendary fighter. Keep watching this video as we tell you what Uncle Dana said to the Stockton Slugger. First up, the door will always be open. Things could not have played out better at UFC. 279. If Hamzat didn't miss weight and Nate still had to go up against him, sentiments would be very different right now. So yeah, we are glad Diaz fought Tony for his last fight at the UFC. Believe it or not, we think this is the fight we wanted all along. We just didn't know whether it was actually possible. And it's because of the Ferguson fight that we think Dana and Diaz were able to end things off on a positive note. After submitting El Kukui and winning the fight, Nate was partying hard with his boys in the locker room. UFC Prez Dana White stepped in and embraced the MMA legend and thanked him for everything he's done for the promotion. Uncle Dana made it super clear that the door is always open for the slugger if he ever wishes to come back. And there is a reason he said that, but we'll get to that in a bit. Congrats. Good luck with everything, man. This is always your f house. If you need anything, whatever you need, it's your house, kid. No doubt about it, it's Nate's house hands down. The Diaz brothers single-handedly skyrocketed the UFC's popularity with their attitude and determination inside the cage. Both of them refused to go down, attracting millions of people to the best combat sports promotion in the world. Next, a rocky relationship. The reason why we said we are glad things played out the way they did is very simple. If things went as scheduled and Nate had to fight Hamzat, people would have hated it. They would have called Dana out for not respecting such a celebrated fighter. They would have ripped him apart for not respecting his legacy and giving him the send-off he truly deserved. And even if we look at the time leading up to UFC 279, both these gentlemen were always at each other's throats. Diaz would say something like he'll only fight champions and then Dana would respond claiming he's out of his mind or something. Believe it or not, there was a point when the Stockton Slugger said he stopped stopped training for his fight against the Chechen Wolf, because it was the matchup he never asked for. Some fighters even thought of suing the promotion for putting him up against a monster like Hamzat. So just imagine for one second if he had fought Shamav at UFC 279. Would he have still been able to walk into the locker room and tell him this is his house? Because it probably wouldn't have felt like it. But anyway, let's not dwell on things that didn't happen. Moving on, why are the doors open though? Why in the world would Nate ever want to return to the UFC now? Like why did Dana say the doors will always be open for him? Does he even need it now? He can probably make twice as much money he made at the UFC by just fighting a couple of exhibition matches. And let's not forget, he even has his own fighting promotion company now, so he'll probably have his hands full at all times trying to get things off the ground. But you know Uncle Dana, he's quite the businessman, and when he told Diaz the doors would always be open, he had one particular fight in mind. He'll probably try to match the notorious Conor McGregor and Diaz for their final trilogy fight at the UFC. And trust us when we tell you this, that's a fight no one would want to miss. It'll probably end up breaking the 2.4 million PPVs record as well. Conor and Diaz have already talked about the trilogy fight on Twitter, so who knows, maybe it could actually end up happening somewhere down the line. Now for an average send-off. Some people still think Nate Diaz didn't get the exit he deserved. He had been matched with Tony Ferguson to start with. Maybe we would have seen a different side of him during the buildup. Maybe he would have been more engaged with fans because it's a fight he had a chance of winning. With Hamzat, he just sort of gave up. And we hate saying that, but it's true. It was super clear he had no interest in fighting Hamzat, and he probably knew he'd lose, so he stopped training and stopped promoting altogether. He was still the same I don't care attitude though, but it wasn't the Nate we knew. Yeah, but speaking of an average send-off, Johnny McCarthy and Josh Thompson smashed the UFC for not giving him a fair exit. Both these gentlemen think Diaz brought in the company at least $500 million to $1 billion in terms of revenue, but this was before his opponent got switched at the very last second. You still can't deny the fact that he was one of the UFC's greatest investments ever. Time for some more on the UFC. Next up, Whitaker still wants a trilogy. There's absolutely no doubt that Whitaker is rising fast. He's just inches away from another shot at 
at the title now, and he'll probably be fighting his arch nemesis Israel Adesanya or the new kid on the block, Alex Pereira. But regardless of who wins that fight, Whitaker says the third fight between him and the last stylebender will definitely happen. He kept things super respectful though. He acknowledged Izzy for being the best of the best, outclassing him on both occasions. But the Reaper said he almost had him the last time they fought at UFC 271. We're not gonna lie, it was a really close fight, but at the end of the day, a loss is a loss. Until he's actually able to step inside the cage with the Nigerian, dance for five rounds and get the W, he can talk about being inches away from winning the fight or whatever. And yeah, we also agree with him when he says he does more damage, but again, a W is a W. Let's see how things play out for the Aussie. With how things are looking right now, he might have to fight Pereira real soon. Following up with Bo Nickel. After seeing how he pretty much got ripped apart by the fight world, including UFC Prez Dana White and Smash Bro Darren Till, Bo Nickel took the time to clear the air and rephrase what he meant by the Hamzat callout. Nickel said that he didn't mean any disrespect when he called out the undefeated fighter, but since he's not here to sit around and go with the flow, he needs to take things into his own hand and climb to the top of the division. The only way he can do that is by fighting the best of the best. And since Hamzat is one of the best fighters out there, he said he needs to defeat him to solidify himself as the next big thing at the promotion. Well, we gotta give him credit for escaping the situation, because his original callout certainly wasn't this respectful. But the 26-year-old is doing really well. He's yet to make his UFC debut, but you can tell he knows how to get people talking. And honestly speaking, it's a welcomed addition to the promotion. We've missed trash talkers like Conor McGregor and Chael Sonnen. Maybe this kid can fill the space. Last but not least, Dana's on the secret juice. Have you seen how ripped Dana looks? He just shared a picture on his Instagram, and we're not gonna lie, the boss is in exceptional shape. It's mind-blowing to think he's 53 years old. The boss shed almost 30 pounds to get in the best shape of his life. And wanna know the interesting bit? Remember that time when we told you about how Dana got his blood work done by some big shot doctor who told him he only had 10 years to live? Well, Dana took that pretty seriously. He's completely transformed his life to prove that doctor wrong. He also took over the fight world and social media after uploading the picture because what he's done is just so stunning. He even got praise from boxing legend Tyson Fury, who shared Dana's picture on his story with the caption, hard work pays off. Go get it, people. And we're just sitting here thinking Uncle Dana got a whole lot scarier. That's it from our side, folks. So what do you think? Are you glad Dana and Diaz were able to end things off on a good note? And how different would things have been if he had fought Hamzat at UFC 279? Let us know in the comments below. Remember, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos in the future. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.